Hey there, everyone. How you doing today? Michael Zuber, author of One Rental at a Time. And as we mentioned in episode number one, we are going to talk with the legend Jonathan Twomley about asset bubbles. Why asset bubbles? Well, he and I have been through a couple. Uh, they are often easiest to see in the rear view mirror, but we have both experienced it. We both know what it kind of feels like when we're in the moment. And some would argue that uh, just yesterday we had a washout in the crypto market. Uh, I, on my daily financial news, I highlighted that. Actually, let me get the number here. 831,269 accounts were wiped out because they were trading crypto on margin. Stop yeah. it. That is idiotic behavior. The largest account, Jonathan, 67 million bucks got wiped wow. out because they were trading a speculative asset on margin. Just, just dumb. But let's talk about asset bubbles. Jonathan, how are you? I'm really good at, as usual. Um, I and this is a really I love this topic because uh, I like markets and I find them really interesting. And um, you know we've lived, as you said, through several bubbles now. Uh, you know there was the the New York City real estate bubble of the 1980s. There was the dot com bubble of the late 90s. There was the great financial bubble of the 2000s. And now we're in the everything bubble. Yes, and the everything bubble. I love that. The everything, the everything bubble because everything is correlated now. Yeah, actually, everything was correlated in the great financial crisis too. It was the first time that everything was correlated. Uh, but now everything is continues to be correlated. Um, once again, it relates to overly low interest rates, mm -hmm. which are low because they have to service the federal budget deficit. Uh, but the... Um, Interesting point about margin that you just made. I was just reading before we got on the call that uh, trading on margin is now at the highest level it's been since the, the dot com bubble. It's actually higher. It's higher now than uh, the great financial crisis, which is pretty frightening. Yeah, um, th th I've seen and, that as well. And, and I got to tell you, this this feels so much like the dot com crash to me. Again, I was that person in the dot com crash who had fear of missing out, had beginner's luck, and then got stupid. And it, it, it crushed me. It, it, well, it's six figures. It hurt. So the, the, the way that I actually wanted to phrase or to frame this segment today, and I put this question up in my, my Facebook group today, and I'll, I'll see what people are saying. I kind of have a feeling that I know what they're going to say. But the question is, if everybody thinks it's a, bu it's a bubble, can it be a bubble? Ah. Right? Now, because the, now the idea behind this, the assumption behind this question, or one of the assumptions behind the question, is that bubbles typically, you know, form when everybody is denying that it's a bubble, right? So therefore, yeah. if if everybody is like got their eyes wide open, could it possibly be a bubble? Now, well, I'm curious what you, how would yeah, you that, answer that question? That's interesting. So again, I want to I want to go back to the experience that we'll talk about the great financial crash, which is obviously real estate, at least real estate oriented, single family home real estate, my market, right? Um, everybody was saying, and again, I was going to meetups and, and thankfully I experienced the crash in 2000, which ca caused me to be hypersensitive to the vibe mm -hmm. in the room. But the answer was uh, single family homes only go up. They, they, they never fall, right? It was a very common phrase. So clearly nobody saw the bubble. However, what I'm seeing now is I actually see it like a balloon, right? So balloons can pop, but you can also take your finger off the, I don't know, whatever it's called, the, the front and stop blowing on it, right? Or just let mm -hmm. out the air. And I think that's where we're at with this everything bubble, all right? And again, you can't really say bubble because bubbles just pop. I, I do see it as a balloon where popping is possible. But when I think about the everything bubble and I think about it just, other than the crypto market, which I, I just talked about yesterday on my show, I think that was the closest thing to just total stupid, idiotic meme investing. No, no. Basically, what I see a bubble is when nobody does their homework. They follow other people's lead. They jump in because it's hot. It's exciting. It's a game. That's when stupid things happen. When you make financial decisions or investments with no research, it ends badly. And that's what I see happening in crypto. I don't see it in real estate today, right? So I think I think to answer the question, I don't know that it is everything bubble. Is crypto a bubble? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, what's called alt altcoins or, or frankly called shit coins out there that come and go and are gonna kill people, just crush them. Um, 
so I do think there are bubbles out there, but I don't, I guess to use that analogy is I don't see the everything bubble. I understand it, uh, but I think some are balloons that you can let out, like single family homes are getting unaffordable and inventory is coming and lumber is falling, right? New construction stopped. Builders, builders realized that they can only raise prices so much. So they stopped building this week down 13.6% on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I do think there's bubbles out there. I think crypto is a bubble. Uh, you know, sure, there could be one or two, maybe five winners, but that just means 99.9% .9 of them are going to go to zero. So I don't know. That's kind of my first thoughts. Well, see, I, I, I kind of answer the question a little bit differently. Sure. The, the question is to like, if everybody sees it, can it be a bubble? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the answer is yes. And I think okay. the, reason, the reason is that unlike, say, in the past bubbles that we've lived through, where everyone denied that there was a bubble, except yeah. for a few, a few smart people who shorted the bubble and made billions. Um, you know, I mean, like for instance, the denial last time around was so, the, the denial of the housing bubble was so great yes. that there were people who, after the bubble popped, denied that it yeah. was a bubble. <laughs> they right? did, and yes. you know, guys like Larry Kudlow were out there like, <laughs> claiming that 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 the housing bubble was a this was just a temporary cor correction <laughs> and it was low. about to, it was a, God, such yeah. an idiot. I mean, and it, like that it was a temporary correction and that it was going to immediately return. Yeah. You know, it was contained was, to subprime, right? Remember that? Yeah. He was arguing this for like, like two years after the thing <laughs> popped that it was, that we were just, just in a correction. And so, oh, that's funny. Um, I remember. you know, and there's actually, you can, you can Google this, like somebody compiled all of the bubble deniers. <laughs> That would be like, fun. Into like one article, it's it's really fun to read that stuff. But anyway, uh, you know. But the, now, though, I think what's actually happening is that you have a lot of people who believe that they're smarter than the market and they can get in and get out before Ooh. it pops. Right. So they so they're thinking, yeah, wow. it's a bubble, wow. and, and I can profit off the bubble. <laughs> and I'm smarter and I'm smarter than the market. So I can get in and I can get out before the bubble pops. Yeah. Well, right? so, I, I got, I got proof for you. There's 831,269 people that thought the same way and got wiped out in a 24 hour period. You're not, yeah, there's but, one exit in a movie theater. It's not happening. But they, but I mean, listen, that, those people will have learned, but a lot, but the people who didn't get hurt, right. Think that they're smart or, or you, you still see this phenomenon, like, you know, Bitcoin, for instance, had a big, you know, bounce back up yesterday. Yep. It went down to thir to thirty thousand, yep. and then it went to back up to forty. Yeah, right. So, for a lot of people, will look at that, and their narrative will be like, "See, it's coming back. It always comes back. It shouldn't yeah. sell, right?" And, um, you know, that remains to be seen. But, I, you know, I think what we're seeing is a lot of people who really and listen. I, unlike you. I do see this in the housing market. I see this in the multifamily market mm. where, where the market has become one of churning assets, right? Where yeah. people, are, people are, are buying multifamily assets at very, very low cap rates, historically speaking. Yeah. I mean, they're basically- It's almost the greater fool theory is what I hear you saying, right? They're churning it, it in two years or less and just passing it on to the next person. It, it is. And what they're doing is, is you know, they're buying it as quote unquote value add they they turn they upgrade twenty percent of the units. They prove then, then the funny thing is they're buying it as a value add, right? right? Yep. Which which implies that they're going to re, reposition the asset and create value and either and either hold it or sell it when they're finished repositioning it. But instead, what they're doing is getting out as quickly as possible. So they go. What they do is they 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 rehab twenty percent of the units. Then they put it on the market as a proven value add, right. saying to the next person, look, we've proven that if you rehab it, you're going to get these rent bumps. Mm -hmm. So now buy it for me. Oh, by the way, you have to buy it for me at the post-renovation value and still do the renovation. Yeah. But then someone comes Thank along you. and does it. And, and then, yeah. then what happens is that person comes in, they realize they overpaid for the asset. Wow. They do their 20% rehab, right? And then they turn it around and sell it as a proven value add to the next person 
And the same thing happens. And you see these assets that are now trading three, four, five times yeah. during the same cycle, right? This and, this is exactly why so, I've not I've been out of the multifamily game. I think that I think they're I, I'll say it. You you may not, but I think multifamily in most markets is overpriced and maybe ridiculously overpriced. Yeah, and it, it is, and you know, this is and just to show you that the market is actually functioning. We now, you know, for years and years, the the justification for uh, for buying for overpaying for multifamily was well they haven't there's a shortage they haven't mm -hmm. built enough of it um, they're and they're not building enough of it right yeah. well guess what happened this month I don't know if you caught this mm -hmm. for the first time since the 1980s 600,000 units were started in the last month right so I did. yeah so we are at a, like not all time high starts because the all time high starts were from the 70s mm -hmm. but we are up there now in like historically high territory for new multifamily starts because the market has responded to the supposed shortage of units and also to the low cap rates. And when you have a very low cap rate environment, what happens is it actually becomes better economically for you to build mm -hmm. because you can build at a higher cap rate. And that's assuming that you can exit, right? Yeah. But but at least when you when you perform these things out, you can still hit you know uh, you know attractive IRRs if you're going from ground up construction. And this ha this happens in every cycle. And so what what's going to happen now is that there's going to be you know a glut of multifamily on the market if this if this continues, mm -hmm. and um, and that will cause the you know a correction because those units will go unfilled. They'll start, you know, yeah. for going into foreclosure, and the whole thing will sort of cascade as people realize, as investors realize, hey, I can now buy Class A at a discount. Mm -hmm. What the hell am I going to? Why am I paying a premium to buy, you know, <laughs> old units that have to be rehabbed? Yeah, exactly. Right? So and the, whole thing, yeah. the whole thing will, the whole thing will cause, you know, it, it to trip over. So I mean, this this is this has been a long time in coming, honestly. Yeah. It's been, it's taken a really long time for us to get to this point, yeah. much longer than I think a lot of people expected. But we are at that point where there's a just a massive amount of construction going on and you know, it relates to ease which, with which you can get to at mm -hmm. ease of money. You know, there's investors are fighting each other to get into deals. Yeah. Everybody I know is raising a fund because it's easy to raise a fund now. I mean, when I tried to raise a fund five years ago, everybody told me, pound sand mm -hmm. right now people are throwing their money into funds because because honestly they're like well i can't find deals to do maybe that guy has some magic yeah. if i give him money now it's his problem he owes me a preferred return now right i've taken and so that's now it's his yeah. now it's his worry he's got to go find deals so it's uh you know this is going to end badly and, and again uh, i put my money where my mouth is right i sold some apartment buildings in late 19 maybe a little early but it's because, I mean, even my little world, right? These are, these were, I think, I think I sold a 13 and eight and an 18. So 31 units for prices that I thought were pretty crazy that need an investment. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful I did, right? It first off made the, made, made getting through 2020 easy. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a problem. I do see, I see a bubble forming and I think, I think multifamily is overpriced in most markets. I mean, it is, it is way, you know, it is way above the historical mean for yeah. cap rates. I no mean, question. I think for, for prices, cap rates are historically yeah. low. You always have reversion to the mean. The only issue is is when the reversion happens. Like that's the that you can't really pinpoint it. And that's so and there is yeah the debt structure behind multifamily is what's going to make this cascade and become a problem. It's again what I saw in single family. It's single family. If single family had thirty year debt back in 07, 08, 09, we, it would have been bad. It wouldn't have been catastrophic. It was all those two-year arms that kept resetting, and people like, "Oh, my house is worth less. I'll just strategically default." It just started building on each other. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of equity investors that just that that go to zero and, in the next five years. And listen, I have been hearing the arguments in multifamily world about why you should take adjustable rate mortgages now. <laughs> right? So, I, I know lots of people are doing it, and the reason that they want to do it is because it is much cheaper to exit those those loans right yeah. you can usually repay them with little to no penalty yeah so a lot of people are make, are taking the bet that interest rates are not going to rise or they're not going to rise by much so that they can and also that they can exit and again it's because they want to be able to 
yeah. they want to be able to get out. They're fast, thinking about the right? exit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're thinking about being able to like quickly capture more appreciation on the greater fool theory, right? So they don't want to be locked out by some really high prepayment penalties. Mm -hmm. Now, the irony here is that if you, conversely, if you go with traditional, you know, fixed rate debt that comes with prepayment penalties, the higher interest rates go, the easier it is for you to pay off those penalties because they're inversely related to the interest rate. So mm -hmm. you actually like, you know, if you get, if you're, really worried about like interest rates, you know, going up, but right? you want the fixed rate debt. I mean, you want for, for various reasons, but it's not going to prevent you from exiting, right? It's going to actually make it easier for you. And, and in, in some scenarios, the way that those structures work, if interest rates go up enough, you can actually make money by refinancing, right? Mm -hmm. because, because it would cost so little to buy the treasury bills that need to be purchased to replace your stream of payments mm -hmm. that you could actually wind up making money on it under the right circumstances. So, so I, I do see a bubble here. Um, yeah. And, and I think, you know, that it, it's all, and, you know, we, I know you started off the conversation where we wanted to talk about what could cause the bubble to end. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's interest rates. It, it is interest rates. Is. Interest rates are going to be the, 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 the pin. Uh, and again, what, what I see going out there is crypto is clearly uh, in a bubble or yeah, it's a bubble. I think multifamily is in a bubble. Single family kind of where I focus, it could be entering bubble territory, but right now the market is behaving as expected as it gets more unaffordable as values and interest rate rise, we're seeing demand shrink and less sales. So right now, uh, you know, single family residential, you know, four and below feels okay. It feels like a market. And again, I, I see single family like that balloon right now. If we get funky loans, arms, IOs for three years, you know, it's that cascading effect. It, it's like the last mile, right? I would call real estate 04, 05 kind of normal markets. And then 06, 07, you know, they went, the lending got wild. So right now I just don't see it. Yeah, I mean, I think in like the single family market in the, in the, in the last bubble, what you had was people, like you said before, the people who really believed that there was that prices would go up forever, mm -hmm. and they were able to get loans with like no money down at all yeah. to, to buy things, and 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 they didn't care about it resetting to a yep. payment they couldn't afford be because out of they it. were like, yeah. I'm going to be out of it, or I'll always be able to sell it, or whatever. It won't mm -hmm. matter. And I don't, I don't see that now because now I see nope. even Good though loans. even though there is a lot of fix and flip and speculation in single family. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's a little bit different because a it's people buying right now at least this in the mm -hmm. in the sort of COVID winding down era mm -hmm. it's people buying it because they want to live in it. Yes, okay? correct, very different. And and then also for the institutions are buying it because they want to rent it out. Exactly. So they Perfect. they have Long to be term holds. Yep. Right. So they're they have to be tied to that you know that rent cash flow analysis mm -hmm. grounds you in reality. Exactly. They're not they're not investing for speculation. They're investing for essentially as a multifamily alternative because multifamily has the returns have become so unattractive. Oh, I totally so, agree. So that that I think I think you're right that 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 kind of keeps the market a little more grounded in reality. Whereas I think the multifamily market has become just it's, it's untethered. It's yeah, untethered. I think it's, yeah. I think it's disengaged from from reality. It's it's yeah. the flavor of the month. And, yep, flavor of the month's um, a good example. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to go buy as many single family homes as I can the next year or so. And I'm going to do what I did in my book. I'm going to 1031, assuming it still exists, out of houses into multifamily in two to five years. And you know, I'll just go from eight to 80 units like I did last time. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan, thank you for your time. We have a little bit of window. We're going to talk about Fed actions and why we got to pay attention. Thanks, buddy. Absolutely.